Hey everyone, Cruise Control coming up. This is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air oh. automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin. Control. Because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. And... Hello and welcome to Cruise Control. It's a new day and uh, a new show and you know us. This is your automotive uh, online automotive magazine. I am Les Jackson. This is our Cruise Control cat. (laughs) And Fred is over on the other microphone. And uh, as usual, we never fail at this. We have lots of (laughs) stories to go through. Absolutely, Les. So, um, what's going on in the auto industry? Well, it it just it just keeps moving and offering stuff and taking stuff away. And uh, this time we have Cadillac, right? Yeah, we certainly do. We have uh, the Cadillac IQ coming up, which is a pretty cool vehicle, and uh, it is all electric. It's got 700 horsepower, and it is a full-size SUV. We'll, wow. tell, we'll tell you about all the, uh, the uh, cool technology that's going into that, which will be uh, a good deal, don't you think? Absolutely. The Escalade is a big, uh, you know, they don't get any bigger. Um, and over at Land Rover... Instead of big, uh, they have a smaller Defender in the in the works. And that's kind of cool. Yeah, I like the Defender. I had a chance to drive it, and uh, you know, it is uh, it will be interesting to see what a smaller electric version uh, will be like when it comes out. And yeah. then over at Hyundai, uh, we're going to talk about their um, Santa Fe. You know, we've been talking about this a lot. But uh, now we have better pictures of it, more pictures of it, and uh, it uh, is an interesting vehicle. We also found out why certain design styles were uh, utilized on this. There's actually technical reasons. And it has a glove box that can sanitize things for you. Um, wow. <laughs> I bet you didn't know you needed one of those, did you? I Well, I do now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, we're going to talk tech this hour, and uh, this is pretty cool. We're going to talk about electronic shock absorbers that extend the range of electric vehicles. Yes. Uh, and anything that'll do that is a, is a smart thing. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I went to a uh, event a long time ago, uh, and I actually met Dr. Bose. There was a guy uh-huh. named Bose, and very smart guy. Um, and he showed us a suspension system that was just like this years ago. And uh, he th- talked about it as a way for like military scout vehicles to drive at 75, 85 miles an hour over rough terrain and the vehicle would stay completely flat. So this is kind of a realization of what he was working on, I guess, or something yeah, similar. I know that, you know, a number, number of groups have been working on things like this. It, it's tough to do because you have so many cycles per second. That we'll be right back it, on Cruise Control. Yes, uh, you were saying, Les, it's tough to do because... It has, they, you know, this thing, you, you're, you are riding along smoothly, but your your suspension system is just... Slam endless oscillations up yes. and down, um, and you, you if you have something that's going to keep the vehicle perfectly level, uh, which means an electronic uh, suspension system, it has to be not only very fast um, and update itself, you know, like three hundred, six hundred times a second, but it also has to be rugged and and last you know at least seven or eight years yeah uh, or 
75,000 miles, something like that. So that's tough to do. I remember how these things look. They look like uh, like a piece of electronics combined with a shock absorber. They had heat yeah. sinks on them. Um, yeah. And we were on a four-poster, and, and the where the wheels would be were moving up and down with these hydraulic uh, – Right rams and and we were in a vehicle and it was sitting completely flat but the suspension was taking it all and i thought wow could be it would be an interesting uh interesting scenario right <laughs> to have well, that in a vehicle it would be actually i would love it yeah. um i would probably have to pay more for it than my car is actually worth. Less, you could put forty-inch wheels in your vehicle and not destroy I, the I ride would quality. Air, sus- air ride suspension. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think that would be great. Don't you think? And and paint flames on the front. Yeah, <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, wagon wheels. You could put wagon wheels on yeah. it and drive on the that, highway at eighty miles. That an only hour. it only works if you're single. <laughs> <laughs> or you will be single. <laughs> you, you will will be single. <laughs> yes. If you really want to do it, you will be single. <laughs> yeah. That's like if, those or, guys that if, yeah. that that if were raising. Really, the, go ahead. Oh yeah. Well, if you really want to be single, do that. <laughs> or those guys that would raise the front of the pickup truck up like this, like use half yeah. a lift kit, and the back is kind of normal height, but the front yeah. is. Carolina squat, they call that. Remember Carolina that? squat. Yeah, you're right. And it's, uh, it didn't really catch on much, fortunately. No. Yeah. yeah. We're coming back in on the live show. Yep. Cruise control. And welcome back to cruise control. Your on air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is none other than Les Jackson, and uh, we are here every week at this time to tell you about yep. what's going on in the automotive world. And a big announcement uh, this week from uh, Cadillac, Les. Escalade IQ, all-electric vehicle, first-ever all-electric SUV from Cadillac. Now, if this is a standalone vehicle. Uh, this is not the body-on-frame Escalade that has been made into an electric vehicle. This is a standalone design from the ground up electric vehicle uh, that uh, uses uh, a ton of new technology. Uh, and you look at some of these numbers on this, uh, they have up to 750 horsepower with something called uh, a driver selectable velocity max selector okay up to 785 pound feet of torque also selectable via velocity max um zero to 60 in less than five seconds <laughs> with a driver this... selectable velocity max this velocity max just... seems clearly velocity max yeah but let's just bear in mind this 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 uh escalade weighs Easily 8,000 pounds. Oh, yeah. So zero to 60 in less than six seconds. Hmm. So the technology, oh, it also can tow 8,000 pounds. Of course. That's a (laughs) Cadillac uh, estimate. Um, It rolls on 24-inch wheels with 35-inch tires. Wow. Well, as you say, it's, it's a heavy heavy it's well it has to be the the battery in this thing has got to be probably a ton yeah now one of the other neat things it can do uh is four wheel steering and frankly with a big vehicle like this it if you can crab it a little bit to get in uh, yeah. uh steering uh parking places with four wheel steering it's a it's a good thing um, it's funny. This technology is making a big, big comeback. You and I saw this in the early 2000s, I think. Uh, yeah, this was uh, actually late 90s. We saw this steering technology. Chevy had put it in uh, in their pickup trucks, which at the time 
didn't really get a lot of interest, but we didn't understand why, because you'd think in a pickup truck, uh, you'd love that. Yeah. But, um, uh, but this is going to be part of the Escalade IQ. Um, it has all kind of safety capabilities. Blind zone steering assist can provide a brief, firm turn of the steering wheel when potential crash is detected. Wow. Um, intersection automatic emergency braking. HG surround vision. I mean, uh, it's it's just got a ton of safety features. Now, it's yeah, it's impressive. Since this was designed from the ground up to be an EV, it does have a large e-trunk compartment under the hood with 12 cubic feet of storage. Um, it has a motorized charged port door that opens with a touch. It's kind of funny. Hmm. Like, does that really need to be motorized to open that little well, flap? Well, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, that's a nice gadget, but yeah. as long as the door will open, I'm... I'm perfectly happy. A little spring on it's good, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, that's typically it's just a little spring on them. Oh, it, they've taken a page from uh, from Corvette because that um, frunk up front will hold two golf bags. <laughs> ah, you know. Uh, so, uh, but, but but Fred, you you need a ladder to get up there to get them. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Interesting. Yeah. Um, it talks about Super Cruise, but it does not mention Ultra Cruise, which has been delayed. Remember, mm. Super Cruise works great, but it only works on certain roads. Like in this area, New Jersey Turnpike, it would do lane changes for you. It would do, um, you know, semi hands-free driving. You had to keep your hands close by on the wheel. Did a good job. I actually tested it on the Chevy Bolt, uh, and this will get Super Cruise. Ultra Cruise will be the same system, but it will work on any road. It won't need to be on just certain roads. Yeah, that's that's attractive. Yeah. Uh, 450 miles of range, which is uh, impressive for a uh, heavy— again, uh, to give you an example, that is— that is uh, Arlington, Virginia to Saratoga Springs, New York. That's a good example. Happens to be 452 miles, and I've driven it many times. Well, we will talk about the Escalade IQ a little bit more on cruise control, so stay tuned. Uh, big vehicle, um, big heavy vehicle It's an interesting story. Uh, less, um, I believe this comes from Germany, um, where the, uh, they have a version of the ID buzz. That's a camper and it is called the California edition and it is not sold in California <laughs> I didn't yet, which is of kind course of, it's not. which is kind of ironic. But uh, it um, was so heavy that they had to pull it from the offerings because you would need to have a truck driver's license to to drive it wow. because of the weight. Wow, <laughs> that's right. There, there is what, but in this country. Uh, you can drive some heavy stuff without a... Yeah, you can. I think, yeah, you can get a pretty heavy vehicle, even a even a dually uh, pickup. You know, you can drive that without a trucker's license. But... Well, you can do, you can drive a, uh, a, what a lot of people do is they take uh, tractors, tractor trailers, but they take the tractor and, and they make it into a private vehicle you don't need a oh. CDL, and they tow and a fifth yeah. wheel trailer with it because boy, it, that that's an expensive little. Well, toy. they they get tractors that have you know a million miles on them or something like that, and they typically uh, get rid of the one axle in the back and shorten the frame. Hmm. Um, but uh, well, you know, I think some people want to drive a 
tractor trailer and those that drive a tractor trailer for a living are like <laughs> great here take mine <laughs> yeah that's right it's all yours yeah so um so it you we, can we uh we do want to talk about the 55 inch screen yes we will talk about that when we come back on the yeah. live show for sure um yeah 55 inch screen um you know it what do you think this is going to cost uh it's 130,000 price starts yeah which doesn't seem like that much money uh, i i just heard myself say that yeah that's why my answer was uh <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. You're going, okay, who are you and where is Les? Uh, notice it has kind of the look of the Celestique, the bespoke vehicle. It does, yeah. The double lights. Double light. All right, we're coming back live. Yep. Cruise Control. Welcome back to Cruise Control. We were talking about the new Escalade IQ, and there's so much to talk about with this that we're continuing. Um, it is a real tour de force uh, on the part of the Cadillac division engineers. Yeah, the engineering um, division, right? They always uh, pride Yeah, themselves. I mean, they they really do innovate. Um, and But it must be a lot of fun designing something like this. Uh, but I'll bet it's also a lot of work. It, it's interesting what the designers have done. They've kind of tried to keep it looking somewhat like the the Escalade, which they say the design of the Escalade, and it's true, has always been in your face. Remember when it when they came out with the gigantic logo on the Escalade? Right. Um, but the other big thing is the 55-inch screen, basically A-pillar to A-pillar. It is yeah, the, the dash. Whole whole dash is a screen um i think these things are going to do very well and i think people will be using them for luxury uh you know car service vehicles right office on wheels they have tables in the back and screens in the back yeah. and screens yeah uh, it, i mean it really is fitted out and uh, we actually have a price on it that it starts at. I have a feeling you're not going to buy one <laughs> for this, but uh, it starts at one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, which for all of this stuff, four hundred and fifty mile range. Um, that's. I mean, I I don't I still am surprised at myself saying it. It seems. <laughs> It's rather reasonable. You're having an out of body experience. Right? I, I am uh, <laughs> because you know you can spend that much on on a you know a uh, Grand Wagoneer. Yeah, which is a terrific vehicle, but you know it it's not this. Um, yeah, and and I I'm sure that the options that you can get for the IQ will bring you up. What do you think? At least 150. Uh, maybe uh, it has night vision. I remember that when Cadillac. Yeah, I love night vision. I've been in a couple over the years that uh, had it and was driving at night and saw stuff that I wasn't aware was there. Yeah, um, it will be interesting to see what when we talk about starting at one hundred and thirty. What option? What is optional there? I mean, is the full full uh, width? dashboard optional you know with the screen the 50 no but I'll, I'll bet the rear screens and all the other stuff are options oh the table i wanted the table i like the table uh, i like the table but i'll bet that's an option <laughs> i bet you're right i bet you're right um, and it's the, a ten thousand you know, dollar table <laughs> and the electric doors uh on the charging the charging door i'll bet i could, oh, I could do without options. that i could do without that. Uh, yeah i wouldn't care about that yeah yeah well, there you have it. Uh, it is new from Cadillac. It is the Cadillac Escalade IQ, purpose-built SUV, 450-mile range, 700 horsepower. <laughs> um, I actually think the styling is a little 
toned down compared to the current Escalade. It but... is. It's a little more back 15 years or so. Yeah. Um, um, well, mo muted styling. More muted. Uh, a lot of light show lights, you know, a cycling of lights. Uh, well, you know, everybody's into that now. Mood lighting and yeah, all that stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, it, it puts me in a bad mood. <laughs> it, well, you're the guy that's saying, oh, hey, it's only 130. Like, get me a couple. Yeah, well, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but uh, it seems like not a bad price. Well, all right. So let's uh, let's talk about another upcoming um, EV SUV. And I can't really show you it because it doesn't exist yet. But I can show you a Defender, a Land Rover Defender that I actually had uh, the opportunity to drive. And I found it to be fun. It was like a giant Tonka toy, uh, big wheels and kind of square. And it was just kind of a fun, well, fun vehicle. Traditional, tr traditional Defender look. Yeah. Very yeah. popular now, with the Land Rover. Now, taking a, a page out of... Ford's uh, Ford Bronco and Sport sounds like uh, it has been confirmed that there there will be a smaller Land Rover Defender known as the Land Rover Defender Sport. It will be smaller than the Defender, and it will be all electric powered. It will be a size down from the standard 110 and 130 inch wheelbase of the current Defender. And it will be um, all electric with a dual motor setup, standard uh, E all-wheel drive system. And it will be every bit a Land Rover uh, with capabilities, you know, uh, off-road capabilities. Um, they wouldn't make one that was not cap that capable. No. So, um Hey, I, I I think it's kind of a page out of uh, uh, Ford's playbook, don't when you say? I think so, and uh, they have spent uh, Jaguar Land Rover has spent fifteen billion dollars in electrified uh, modular architecture, so they're doing it right. And um, yeah, I'll be anxious to see this. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's talk about a vehicle that you and I um, have. We've been kicking this around a lot, and it seems like the trend is now for square vehicles. We went off the Defender yep. and the Baby Defender, and this is a vehicle that looks very much like it, and it is none other than the Hyundai Santa Fe. I just drove a Hyundai Santa Fe not that long ago, and it was one of the best driving vehicles I've driven in a long time. But it looks completely different than this. Uh, this is the new model. We've been telling you a little bit about it, but now we have more detail on it. And uh, it is squared off, major wheel arches. It is um, just a totally, totally different look. I can't really think of a vehicle that's going to look completely different than the current model. It um, like this one reminds does. me of the original Honda Pilots back in the yes early 2000s. Um, SUVs are sort of going back to the old look. Yes, I agree. Uh, certainly Honda Pilot, maybe the Ford Flex. Yeah. But, uh, but it's certainly back to the old days of squared off. Now, this has got some interesting features in it. Um, and By the way, this is the first full model change since 2018 for this, and this will be the fifth generation of this. Longer wheelbase will mean it, it gets three-row seating, um, and it is all new. It's expected to go on sale in Korea in August and in North America, Europe in the first half of 2024. Um it has uh, the cape, and you look at that. That's pure Defender right there with that those things the, hanging on the window. <laughs> um, the new interior has useful things such as a UVC sterilization tray in the in the glove box. 
that's like I mean I I had something for a toothbrush like that. You put it in this little compartment and the UV light goes on and it sterilizes. I guess it's something like that, right? Um, uh, yeah, it would be. Yeah, um, you know, it's not an autoclave or anything. But it's, <laughs> no, I, it'll that, that it'll would... work quite nicely. Yeah, and you know, it's a good idea because you know we throw stuff, sunglasses and combs and stuff in, in your cell phone. Your cell phone, and it's really a good idea to sterilize that stuff or at least clean it every, every once, once in a while. while. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, I know in uh, other parts of the world, they have, in airports, they have uh, cell phone cleaners and things like that. But yeah. we, we will tell you a little bit more about uh, the Hyundai Santa Fe when we come back. We'll take a look at some more of the interior features, exterior features. So stay tuned to Cruise Control. Uh, I'm Fred Staub. He is none other than Les Jackson. We will be right back. Mm -hmm. Some of the toughest training in the military is actually. All right. Yeah. Can you think of a um, model less that has been so dramatically changed from one generation to the other that. Mm. You you wouldn't really if you didn't know you wouldn't recognize it was that. Um, there was there were some cars that did that. I guess you could say the Corvette even, but well, the Corvette C seven. Yeah, except you would still you'd still recognize it as a Corvette. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of anyone that looks that different. You know. Uh, may well maybe the new Prius. I just drove that. The that the looks, new Prius. Yeah, yeah. That that was pretty dramatic styling change. Yeah, it didn't burn any gas when I had it. I don't know. <laughs> it's amazing. Hmm. It's amazing. It was a Prius Prime. We'll have a at the wheel review of that coming up uh, this hour. Actually, we're going to have a uh, at the wheel review of the atlas very popular yeah. vehicle this is a 2023 model and it actually is getting a lot of i'll, I'll call it a pretty significant upgrade for 2024 it's getting a, a new interior yeah it's i like the atlas it's a it's nice it's a clean design machine. yeah super clean design um you know i have a few concerns about it but i'll talk about them um this one had the v6 and that's going away for 2024. They're going to have a pumped up four. So it will have more horsepower than the standard four. And it will have a little less than the V6 that I drove, but not by much. So, uh, But, you know, they play with transmissions and things like that to make it feel just as punchy. So uh, we'll talk about that. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. We're coming back live. You're in. Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Fred Staub and Les Jackson, we are glad you are along for the ride. You're buckled up. We're taking you through some new vehicles coming up. We were talking a little bit about the Hyundai Santa Fe, uh, completely changed from the current fourth generation model. This is going to be the fifth generation model available in the U.S. sometime in early 2024. Very square. Uh, has a dual phone charger, dual wireless phone, wireless phone charger. I think something we're going to see a lot more of. Yeah. It's, well, everybody's got a phone. Everyone's got a phone, and they uh, and they want to use it. Um, proactive driver assistance. Uh, it fuel efficient. It's going to have. Um, your choice of a hybrid with a 1.6 liter engine, a plug-in hybrid with a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, or the 2.5, um, I believe it's going to have a 2.5 and a 2.5 turbo engine. So a lot of choice there. There are a lot of choices. I drove the um, current version with the... Uh, with the hybrid, and I was really impressed with it. I liked how it drove, so I'm wondering 
how this new one will be since it's completely different unless it's the same thing under a brand new skin could be i suspect it's um it's a new look but um tried and true yeah innards it was nothing wrong with the innards <laughs> uh, i'll tell you hyundai really engineers a fine car you know interesting story uh from jalopnik I don't know if you've seen it, but the 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 taillights are kind of mounted low, right on the gate, yeah. which looks a little strange. And apparently, according to the engineer, they did that so they could have a a super big tailgate because they needed large struts to hold it up. And if they uh, put the taillights higher up in the um, tailgate it would would have meant that they would not have been able to uh, use the big enough struts and it would have meant they would have had to reduce the size of the tailgate hmm. so. so they of course would compensate with a very bright larger chimsel yes center mounted rear yeah light light <laughs> yeah so in the door probably yeah so they went with the with the bigger uh, tailgate and lowered the uh, the lights down. So interesting stuff. I you know there's one flaw in that, and I you know I agree with with having a nice big tailgate and a uh, I like that. It's very useful. But if you like around here in our houses, we have townhouses, and you can back up right to the garage door. Mm -hmm. But I find if I back up close to the garage door and then open the tail and the doors down and open the tailgates, they hit the garage door. Oh, yes. They swing. You've got to park further down the driveway to sort of prevent that or open the garage door first. And if you do that, they still hit because they might flip more than seven feet up and the garage door is only seven feet up when it's open. I'll tell you the solution. We need to bring back the magic tailgate. Do you remember the magic tailgate? Y yes, I love those. <laughs> or the clamshell one that went yep. top and bottom. <laughs> That's right. You know, I think I think that might it might be time. I often wonder the Ford one where it would swing out or tilt down. I often I as a kid I was that, like, now how would they make that work? That I took one of those apart years after seeing them when I was in high school uh, to figure out how they did. It's very, it's actually rather simple, but it's really clever. Yeah, very clever. That was the Ford has a better idea advertising days. Yes. Ah, somebody, somebody had their thinking cap on when they did that, huh? Yeah, but it was <laughs> a great, great tailgate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. Well, uh, let's talk uh, a little bit about um, what's going on at Jeep. Uh, Jeep, let's talk a little bit about what's new for uh, 2024, Gre Jeep Grand Cherokee. Um, right. And, you know, these are popular vehicles. They're, it's, it's not a lot new for them. Uh, other than some new wheels, some new colors, some new painted aluminum wheels. Um, they have th colors like Rocky Mountain and Silver Zenith and Velvet Red. Um, what's new really is it's the new wheels and just a few items. I don't know. I don't have pricing on this, but these are very well-equipped vehicles. I tell you, you can't, you can't go wrong with one of these. And same goes for their... Um, for their uh, 4 XE model, uh, which is their plug-in hybrid and their, their hybrid models. Uh, they have a few new things. They have a Trailhawk model that gets standard 18-inch black painted aluminum wheels. There'll be an anniversary edition, uh, offers Capri leatherette seats, ventilated front seats, uh, wireless charging pad, Nine speaker Alpine audio system, U Connect, 10.1 inch touchscreens, unique blacked out appearance. Uh, of course, the 4XE can go 25 miles of all electric range. 
and then it becomes a hybrid, 375 horsepower, and it comes with blue tow, tow hooks to show off that you have a plug-in hybrid. But um, that's a nice deal for a Grand Cherokee, isn't it? Yeah, and, and the Grand Cherokees are, you know, are really nice vehicles. They've been around a long time. Um, people love them. Uh, it's one of those that you get um, one person owns it, and when they're ready to trade it in, they get another one. Yeah, yeah, a lot of lot of brand loyalty there for sure, um, and uh, I'm sure there'll be some special editions of them as well. Um, when will we see an all-electric version of the Grand Cherokee? I don't think we have any data. I don't that. know. I, I think maybe we will, only because uh, Stellantis has to follow everyone else. Mm -hmm. With what they're doing. Yeah. So uh, I think they're going to be forced to do it. Hey, uh, do you want to talk a little tech? Let's uh, talk. Let's some... do that. Yeah, let's talk some... Uh some tech um, Audi has developed what they call a, a simplified version of Ferrari suspension, uh, basically electric shock absorbers. Right. And uh, this is a way that the shock absorbers. And by the way, this is from car buzz filed in the United States patent and trademark office, fast system, similar to the fast system on the Ferrari. But it is an ultra-fine damping system, electrically controlled. Uh, it uses, uh, it doesn't use hydraulic fluid. It uses uh, magnetic fields to dampen the uh, shock that your vehicle is encountering. And the good thing about this is, less, it saves that energy in a capacitor and can be used to increase the range of an electric Which, vehicle. That's great. That is, that is just great. You um, know what this will lead to? People will say we we're pro electric vehicles, so we're not going to fix our roads. So you <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> <laughs> of course. But the beauty here is that, you know, the, the limitation of a shock absorber is the fluid. The fluid only moves so quickly. Right. Um, and so the piston only can move so quickly. But when it's magnetic, you're turning it on and off hundreds of times a second. Yes. I, uh, I actually encountered this uh, years ago. Bose brought us up for a very secret program. I got to meet Dr. Bose, and we rode on a four-poster where they had a system like this. And they would turn it on and off, and you could feel the big difference in it. And it was designed for vehicles to travel at high rates of speed over, like, rocky ter uh, terrain, you know? I think they were using it for the military. They were thinking about using it for I the military. I think that's, yeah. Now, any, any idea back then what that something like that cost? No, it was just strictly in development at that time. But I... I I don't think they went ahead with it. I think that might be due to it, the cost of it, you know. Active suspension, as they called it. Yeah. I think um, it, it's a wonderful idea. Yeah. So um, there you have it. That uh, That is a little bit of technology and also uses the heat. I think, uh, I think you're going to see all of the energy around the vehicle used to increase range and recycle heat. But when we come back, we're going to have an at-the-wheel review of the VW Atlas. So stay tuned to Cruise Control. All right. Well, we've got an at-the-wheel review coming up. This time it is the um, 2023 Atlas V6 SEL Premium R-Line. So you want to stay tuned for that. Um, very popular vehicle for VW, isn't it, Les? 
It sure is. And, and, um, it's an, it's really a nice vehicle. I, I really like driving it. Yeah. Yeah. I have some points on it that, you know, I couple well, one's a pet peeve, but I'll talk about it in the review, but, (laughs) um, but I, I have a couple of thoughts on it, but, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we will kick that around coming up at the wheel review, and um, we got a lot of vehicles to to get reviewed on cruise control. So we appreciate you hanging in and and watching those. And it's coming up, and uh, yeah, I was supposed to get into the Ionic uh, Six, but I did not make it into that. Apparently, it retired from the fleet before I could uh, get into it. So. <laughs> we'll have, yeah, have to well. get back in on that one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, coming up will be the uh, Atlas, and we are set to go with that when we come back on the live show. Uh, you are listening to the live stream. Don't forget to check out our YouTube page and our Facebook page and subscribe and like. Uh, we like when you like and subscribe. <laughs> so we appreciate that. So. Uh, we will be back in a second. And we're coming up. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Fred Staub and Les Jackson. We've got an Mm at-the-wheel review of uh, the Atlas, which is a, a great, very popular vehicle from the folks over at Volkswagen. This is the Atlas V6 SEL Premium R-Line. Love the design of the Atlas. Just super clean, just really well detailed exterior on this. This is the R-Line. It has different front fascia and rear bumper. Um, and uh some nice uh, uh, pedals on the inside. Love the wheels. These are 21-inch wheels. You don't normally encounter 21-inch wheels. Normally, it's 20 or 22, so this is somewhere in between. Yeah, that's Uh, an odd size. On the inside, if you've ever driven a Volkswagen vehicle, you will recognize this interior. Uh, A lot of (laughs) Volkswagen-ish looks. Uh, Kind Mm. of a (laughs) a no-muss, no-fuss interior, all business. Uh, You have the... um, rotary control for the all-wheel drive system. Uh, You have a very responsive screen uh, for all of your uh, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and of course, you have your uh, wireless charger. This one came with a full panoramic roof, glass roof, one of the fastest opening and closing roofs. On the inside, it's sort of a kind of a carbon fiber look, a lot of gray, a lot of... um, leatherette black leatherette maybe a little bit too much black on the interior um and i felt that it could have been a little higher end but uh good room in the rear seat two passengers cup holders storage areas and and usb connections for all had second row heated seats which is uh, a nice thing to uncover um very volkswagen like very much you know uh, all business german interior even though this vehicle is made in chattanooga tennessee out back good storage even with the third row seat up um a lot of black plastic back here and and uh carpeted rear seats uh had of course your 12 volt plug in less don't get concerned um and the amplifier for the fender audio system was right in the center of the space saver tire here's a pet peeve I don't like fake exhaust ports. These are fake. They do not go through the huh. bottom of, of the um, bumper. They just come out. The, the exhaust pipes come out the bottom. That's a pet peeve. Uh, it's got a V6 uh, engine. This engine is going to be going away, by the way, for um, in the next model year. It will be replaced by a turbocharged four-cylinder. So if you really want the V6, 2023 is the last year for that. Overall, though, very clean styling outside. Uh, They've done a great job. If you are of a shorter stature, the dashboard is a little high, and the front window is a front windshield is a little slit-like. And also, the hood is quite 
flat. So you have to get used to that a little bit. But other than that, this red exterior, the Aurora red metallic exterior was incredible. Just an incredible look. Really popped, I believe. Uh, this is an upcharge, yes, of three ninety-five, um, and you know it's a tinted clear co color. So it it it's just it was just a gorgeous look with the black and the red, and uh, very clean. I just don't like those exhaust pipes, less Outback. I think if you're going to do that, they should be functional. Otherwise, it's like peel and stick customization. That's that's what I say. Yeah, I I agree with you. I I'm a you know, form follows function guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Just, just stuck on something. Stuck on fake. And because I, I noticed it when uh, the engine was running, it's like, well, the exhaust is coming out of the bottom, not out of that. And I looked and I said, oh, it's just blanked off. So I would have, I would have preferred just some chrome trim there, which would have been fine. Um, Thank goodness they kept a lot of knobs and buttons on this vehicle, and it'll be interesting to see if 2024 they, they do that. I believe they will on the Atlas. Um, but uh, a great SUV, a lot of, lot of room inside. The interior is going to get an upgrade. I think it definitely needed an upgrade because uh, it's, it's just neat. it might not be competitive with this interior. Just a thought, even though it sells very, very well, and people do love it. Uh, two seats, two uh, passengers in the back, good comfort, uh, good seat level, uh, lower cushion level uh, for the uh, passengers, good elbow room, and as I said, a lot of, lot of uh, USB ports and things like that. So actual usable third row. You sometimes uh, don't, don't encounter that. So you ask, what does this all cost? Okay, well, I can tell you. I have the window sticker right in front of me. <laughs> 53480 is the number, 53480 uh, That is the all-in price for this uh, Atlas. So uh, not a bad number. I know uh, <laughs> we've been saying that a lot on this show, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's not a bad number, right? Actually, uh, for, for what you're getting and uh, the fact that the average vehicle in this country is selling now at 47000 um, this is considerably more than uh, you'd be getting for something you've paid forty seven for. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's not inexpensive, but it's fair. It's not inexpensive, but it's fair. And I think... As I say, the couple of things that I would take away, I felt the interior, while it was fine and very Volkswagen-like, it needed upgraded materials because there was a lot of black plastic in it. And they must have heard me because that for 2024, it's getting lightened up. It's getting higher-grade materials, more padded materials. And I think it will be a little bit nicer. And it, it's made steady improvement from the early Atlas uh, that came out. That was a great vehicle, but I didn't like the interior at all. It's made of a lot of improvements. So I think I think that will be a good thing. I just hope they don't do away with all the knobs and buttons like they did in the GTI. I don't think they will. Um, I just think it's an interior upgrade, better, better materials. And uh, that is welcomed. As you and I always say, uh, we, um, we look for the materials... Uh, because you're looking at the interior, and the interior is what you see, and it is, yep. you know, you know. So uh, I think the other interesting thing for 2023 uh, will be uh, what will the performance be like? Now, you know, the V6 is going away, uh, but uh, you know, that's that's not such a bad thing. That's pretty common, isn't it? It, um, I, th I think the average person won't notice the difference uh, as long as the as the four cylinder has the right shift points and all of that. Still keeping the eight speed automatic, which is yep. Well, that's good. Um, so that that's just a standard thing. So um, I think you're right. I think they'll change the shift points. They'll make it feel punchy, and they will, um, you know make it just as fun as it always has been so uh there you have it 
There, that is the Atlas, um, the uh, R Line Premium SEL, and uh, we hope you've enjoyed that at the wheel review. Les, I have to just quickly say, I know this is a story you've been following for most of your life. Uh, Saab, <laughs> Saab, yes. there, and Nevs, the company that bought Saab. Uh, is building a vehicle called the Nevs Emily GT. Hmm. Kind of a nice-looking uh, electric vehicle. And they hope to get this going. They're going to build it at the old Saab factory. I hope they do, honestly. Um, it, Saab was an interesting car, notwithstanding that when GM owned it, they lost $4,000 on every car. Yeah, that was excellent. <clears throat> but that was that was an investment situation, not a technical one. What do you think of the name Emily? Um, hey, so Porsche actually, was named after somebody's kid, you know, Ferdinand and Porsche's kid, right? Right, right. And uh, the Lancias were named after Rhodes, the Fulvia so, and the... So um, there you have it. I, it's okay. All right. Well, time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. I'm Les Jackson. We are going to see you down the road. Bye.